Welcome to this video on building the 1910 Avro triplane. In this video, I'm going to show you how I built the control yoke, one of the more complicated parts of the airplane. So let's start by understanding exactly how both the full scale and the model will operate. In the full scale, the yoke is moved back and forth, and that controls the pitch of the airplane, and the model will work the same way. In the full scale, that wheel is, is rotated, and that will move cables that will control the wing warping of the plane for roll control. In this uh, model, we're not going to do it that way. It's a bit too complicated to have something uh, way out on that wheel. So on the model, we have a servo that will turn, and it will control some cables. Those cables will then move through the fuselage and they go to pulleys that are uh, located uh, in the cockpit and that will then go out through the control yoke uh, main assembly and then control the wing warping out at the wing tips. It's a bit of uh, complicated business but uh, with some careful construction I think we have a, a good reliable approach. So let's get a closer look because there is a lot going on and uh, it's particularly challenging when you're trying to do a model airplane versus what is done in the full scale. So here you see the control yoke and there's a lot going on here like I said. The wheel here, when the wheel is turned, there are some pulleys that are not shown here but cable will run down from the steering wheel, go out through these tubes and these are the cables that control the wing warping. So that's how lateral control is, uh, or roll control is taken care of. The elevator is done by moving this stick back and forth. So as this pitch is back and forth, there is cabling rigging wire that goes from these uh, uh, brackets here out to the tailplane, and that's how the uh, pitch is controlled. What we don't want to have happen is that when the stick is moved back and forth, we don't want it to affect the uh, wing warping, and conversely, when we turn the wheel or cause the wing warping cables to move, we don't want the elevators to move. And that's done by a tricky biz a bit of business here with this servo. The servo has these wheels on it and they have the cable wrapped around them. They go through small pulleys in the fuselage. Um, that goes up, the, pulley, the cable goes up into tubes in the yoke assembly and they go out to the end. And uh, what makes this particularly challenge challenging to build is that this tube, as held by this bracket, is stationary. So when the yoke moves back and forth, as you see, the uh, wires that run the wing warping don't move. And conversely, when the cables move in and out, that has nothing to do with this. So that is the challenge before us. How do we make this thing uh, out of bits of brass to give us uh, good and independent control of the airplane? So here is just the yoke assembly and we're going to start taking it apart and showing you how to build the individual pieces. The first part that we're going to focus on is um, this part which again is a few pieces of brass that will remain stationary where the wing warping cable will come up through and out the other end. So here you see just that piece and it is actually made up of three independent pieces. The first piece is just a bent piece of tubing. Um, it's got to be bent very carefully and the way I do it is I put in a piece of wire. I just take some st standard stranded wire and I uh, move it through here and then very carefully with a pair of pliers bend the piece of tubing and then pull out the wire. And if you're careful you can get a pretty tight bend. So that's how that piece was made. The next piece is just a uh, piece of uh, sleeving that goes over it and this will be soldered here so this becomes one piece. And then the third piece that makes up this part is just another piece of tubing inside soldered here for strength. So this is a very strong piece and this will pivot inside the main yoke assembly or more accurately the main yoke assembly will pivot around this piece. So here we have our first piece of our yoke assembly and we'll need two of these and once both are complete it's on to the next step. So this may get a little confusing but uh, bear with me hopefully at the end it'll all make sense. Uh, 
So what you're seeing is a uh, the next level of uh, assembly for the yoke, and what we're going to deal with is this bit of business down in here. As you see, this is a notch, and that is where the piece we just made uh, will fit in. So we're now going to make this. The reason this is slotted, and again, it will become apparent later, is that when we solder all of this up, we don't want to fuse the part we just made into this because we need to have it pivot. So this slot is to slide uh, the part we just made off to the side while we solder this up. So that's why that's there. So let's get a closer look at this part. And what it really is, is a long piece of tubing that uh, we cut these notches in and then we cut it here. Um, the reason we cut it here is because we can slide it in from both sides into the larger piece of tubing and solder it all up. So that's why that's done. It's a very easy part to make, but very important that you have this slot in it so that we can make sure that we don't fuse anything together and everything moves very freely. So after this piece of tubing has been cut and slotted, the next is one of the easiest things to do. And all we have to do there is to add a tube that's cut the length and solder it all up together. So we have one long piece of very strong uh, tubing with these slots in the right place. So this is uh, part of the process that I like the most, where you get to actually put some real parts together and see if they work. So uh, we can just do that by putting in a piece of the cable and uh, obviously make sure that that flows back and forth nice and freely and then insert that into the part that we just made and as you can see it pivots quite nicely and we know that we're good to go to the next step. As you can see we made a, a slight change to the design in that we cut that slot all the way out to the end so we had uh, no chance of accidentally uh, fusing our parts together. So at this point, we have our yoke assembly that is nicely reinforced with a uh, piece of tubing in the center section. And now the next step is to reinforce the outer sections with uh, the same piece of thick tubing. Uh, the first step in that is to lay our tubing down on the plans and to mark the length of the slot that we're going to put in that tubing so uh, it will fit over the pivoting piece. So this is actually the slot that I was referring to earlier. This is the one that uh, is a little longer so that we can slide our pivoting piece off to the side when we uh, solder the whole thing up. Um, it's a very straightforward process. You don't need a lot of special tools. Uh, you just use the Dremel to cut the slot to the proper length. And then it's a matter of uh, delicately and carefully cleaning the slot up. It only has to be thick enough to accommodate the pivoting piece so with uh, several runs of the Dremel, a bit filing, we have a clean piece that we can then solder to our main yoke assembly. But before we solder these pieces together, we have to add another feature, and that is a notch at the end. And since this piece will pivot around our tubing that has the uh, wing warping cable in it, we have to provide enough travel so that when the servo activates the uh, yoke assembly, it has enough freedom of movement. Again, a simple process, just rough out the notch with the Dremel, follow it up with a bit of filing, and then we have a nice clean notch to give us all the travel we will need when the servo is activated. Now we're ready to prepare to solder these pieces together. And we do that by making sure we have very clean parts. Um, I use sandpaper and the file, sometimes an emery cloth, and make sure that we have fresh metal so that the solder flows properly and we get a good solid bond. Now it's time to apply a solder paste to our parts. Uh, I prefer the paste over the liquid. It's easier to control uh, where you put the paste and therefore where the solder goes. And now for the moment of truth. First we assemble the parts and make sure everything moves nice and freely. And here you can see that the pivoting part is moved out of the way. When it comes to soldering, less is more. So you want to make sure to heat up the parts and let the solder flow into the parts and not melt the solder and lay it on like glue. As you can see, the solder disappears into the joint. And that's what we want. We want to see the solder flow into the joint and fuse the outer pieces to the tube below. <laughs> 
So after a little bit of cleanup, we can check to make sure everything is the way it's supposed to be. So here it's easy to see that with the pivot piece moved off to the side, it was in no danger of being fused when we soldered those two tubes together. But now we can move it back where it belongs, check to make sure things are pivoting, and move on to do the exact same thing on the other side. So moving back to our CAD model, this is what we have so far. We have our main bar, at least the internal part of it, with our pivots where they need to be, and we've shown that they move nice and freely. The next step is to start to work on the brackets that will operate the elevator. And it begins by cutting out a printout of the part and attaching it to a piece of strip brass using spray adhesive. The location where the parts need to be drilled are marked with a punch. The parts are then cut out of the strip brass and are rough to begin with, but some filing and some sanding and some shaping, and they come out quite nice. The braces for the elevator bracket are also made out of strip brass. They are marked by laying them down on the printout of the yoke assembly. There is a gap in the strip that will fit snugly over the main yoke tube. It's a little fiddly, but with a little patience, you can get the strip to stay where it needs to be and ready for soldering. Here again, restraint is in order. Heat up the part as completely as possible, then apply as little solder as is necessary. Using the flame, you can actually get the solder to flow where it needs to go. Now it's a relatively simple matter to use the Dremel cutter and cut away the strip, leaving just the braces. We're almost ready for final assembly. The next thing we have to do on this part, now that it's all soldered together, is cut a channel in the bottom so that we can slip it over the main assembly that we've already made. And also, we need to add that same sort of notch so that the pivot part can move in here and give us full freedom of motion when the servo is moved. It wouldn't be surprising if you were a little confused at this point, but now it may begin to make some sense. So we have our main yoke assembly piece along with the elevator bracket pieces. If we slip the elevator bracket pieces on, we can now see how everything is held in the proper place. The pivot points can move front to back, but they can't move side to side. And we can rotate the elevator brackets, making everything nice and vertical. The next thing to be made are the two blocks that hold the yoke assembly onto the fuselage. If you've been able to make everything so far, this should not be a problem, and so I won't go into the details. But it consists of two pieces of brass made from strip material and one small section of tubing. It's through this tubing that the yoke assembly will go. What is important, though, is you remember to add this part to the main yoke assembly before you do the final soldering. After the elevator brackets have been soldered to the main yoke tubes, it's now time to solder the pivot pieces to the yoke blocks. In this case, I've chosen to use an iron. It's a little underpowered for this application, but I felt it's better to use an underpowered iron than a torch. The last thing I want to do after all of this work is to fuse all of this so nothing moves. And now it's finally time to see if all of this hard work pays off. Thanks for watching my video, and I hope you found it enjoyable, and that it'll inspire you to take on a project that you'd otherwise might think is a little over your head. With a little patience and a little bit of research, I think you'll find this sort of work very rewarding and enjoyable.